As Nigeria marches on into its 62nd year of nationhood, we'll evaluate the systems and structures of Nigerian federalism. How can micro, small and medium scale enterprises in Nigeria access the digital economy? We have a discussion on integrating Nigeria's MSMEs into payment gateway services. And in off the press, Upunabo in Kotaria joins us for in-depth analysis of today's newspaper headlines. Very good morning to you. We're back with uh, The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning, reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bertels. It's uh, uh, an interesting uh, lineup of topics we have for you, and we just encourage you to sit back, uh, relax, and enjoy the ride. As usual, we will have uh, our top trending segment, which uh, is a look at the most important uh, conversations and conversations that are attracting the most attention uh, in the social space, talking about online uh, social media platforms. And uh, that's what we bring you enough in, in the Trump trending segment every single day. Um, Nigeria marked its 62nd year of independence uh, from the British colonialists on Saturday. And we, we had a crack panel of um, discussions here on an extended version uh, of uh, the breakfast. And it was quite an interesting time on Saturday. Well, of course, on social media, a lot of Nigerians took to the spaces, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and others, to express their thoughts on, uh, uh, on the day and the significance of independence. A lot of um, uh, organizations, corporate bodies, you know, sharing uh, flyers, e-flyers, you know, wishing Nigeria a happy 62nd birthday. Um, but um, I think the highlight, we can see the highlight of uh, that day was uh, the Independence Day ceremony that held in Abuja, uh, precisely at the Eagle Square. It was a parade um, to mark that Independence Day. And of course, uh, we can see uh, gladly uh, videos of the a clip of the president arriving at Eagle Square uh, in Abuja. This is not been, had not been possible uh, some years ago with the terrorism uh, being on the increase. Um, we had the Independence Day Parade being held within the walls of Atsarok Villa. So I think it's a good sign. It's a good thing to see that uh, we're able to have the parade uh, with the president and uh, the armed forces out there at Eagle Square, Abuja. Uh, president Muhammad Buhari led Nigerians from various uh, social strata to celebrate that 62nd uh, Independence Day the event, which was marked with all sorts of uh, activities, including uh, military drills. As you can see, artistic performances. Uh, we had, uh, you know, military fly um, fly past by the Air Force. We had the uh, paratroopers, you know, gliding in the helicopter team. You can see a former president, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, there, uh, Vice President Yemio Shibajo, uh, Senate President Ahmad Lawan, uh, House of Rest Speaker Femi Baja, Mia Miller, the newly uh, sworn in or newly rather approved, uh, uh, confirmed Chief Justice of Nigeria, also there as well. Uh, Justice Olu Kayode Ariwola, uh, he was also there as well. Uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, Boss Mustafa was there, Head of Civil Service of the Federation, uh, Dr. Fola Shade Yemi Shaw was there. Uh, several ministers, service chiefs were all there. Uh, heads of security and intelligence agencies, members of the National Assembly, and also uh, members of the diplomatic corps. Um, on some day, uh, some days leading up to uh, the independence uh, celebration, we had some paratroopers. These are those who um, use the parachutes, uh, having. Um, uh, you know, if you were a woman, you'd say wardrobe failure. You can see a dog coming down with uh, with a with a soldier from the helicopter. That's quite amazing. I wish you could watch that again. Uh, it what they wild Nigerians, you know, with the with the military display. See the dog, yeah, coming down. You see, and um, of course, this dog will probably help the soldier to for a search um, uh, and rescue because that's what they do. Probably to to help trace you know some kidnapped persons made by terrorists and you know some people have been asking oh okay if we have such uh, an array of talented 
soldiers. What's going on with the banditry and terrorism? What's going on with the you know, victims of kidnappings in different parts of the country, especially the Northwest? What's going on? If we have such you know, military might and military power, firepower, then what is the problem? What is the problem? There seems to be a disconnect somewhere. Um, thankfully, the, the one paratrooper was able to, to make it successfully from the skies and to land without bashing into someone's car. Um, I think uh, it was on Thursday or so, or Wednesday, there were some paratroopers who were trying to, uh, re they were said to have been rehearsing for the Independence Day, uh, uh, you know, festivities. And unfortunately, they, they didn't land too well uh, in Abuja. They ended up landing in some parts of the central business district or central area, rather. Some hit people's cars, some landed on trees. You know, one was hanging from a tree. You know, passers-by had to go rescue the paratrooper with his parachute from that tree as it was dangling. It had to help him down. You know, so some people were laughing and saying, how come uh, the paratroopers couldn't land successfully? And uh, the jury was out as to the, re the, the, the cause uh, of that. But um, on, on the day, uh, Saturday, there was a video of one particular paratrooper landing successfully with a green, white, green parachute. And uh, a voice could be heard in the background saying that, you know what, this guy, they called him out of retirement. Oh, and that led to some people, you know, <laughs> making jests of the whole situation. saying So they couldn't find a, a paratrooper to successfully land a green, white, green parachute. They had to go call someone out from retirement. But, you know, we will never know the real story, you know, from this, this distance. You will never know the real story, you know, from this distance. But, um... Uh, the major highlights of the celebration at Eagle Square, you know, included parades like you've seen, uh, much passed by the nation's military forces, some paramilitary outfits. You had cadets of uh, the Nigerian Military School, members of the NYSC, that's a youth service corps. Um, like I said, the Air Force did a couple of displays with some of the aircrafts recently procured for various anti-terrorism fights. Um, if we have what's going on, why have they not crushed the terrorists? For crying out loud, there were also um, cultural displays. You know, uh, the president closed the ceremony was closed rather with the signing of the anniversary register uh, by President Buhari, and of course the three hearty chairs by the parade, and finally the firing of the twenty-one artillery of twenty-one artillery volleys uh, for the national salute, the national anthem, and the march of parade. You can see Aisha Buhari in the picture by her husband Aisha Buhari, who recently apologized. Uh, to Nigerians for the state of the economy and insecurity. Um, uh, no be small thing. Though. Anyway, that's that. Uh, the president had uh, some things to say, you know, over there. Uh, the Progressive Congress also had some things to say over there. Um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, all we can say is um, happy birthday in Nigeria. And um, it was good to see that at least uh, uh, we, could, we can have some of these uh, parades at the Eagle Square uh, without having to hide within the walls of Asarok Villa because of terrorists. You know, that, is, that, is, that was good to see. All right, let's move on to our next uh, trending uh, story. Yeah, this one also quite interesting as well. I mean, um, I'm talking about uh, the ASU negotiations, uh, the ones that are being put together uh, by the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives and the House of Representatives in general. A video surfaced online showing that uh, showing the Minister of Labor and Employment, uh, Senator Dr. Uh, Chris Ngigi, former governor of uh, Anambra State, uh, walking out on the meeting with the permission, with the permission of the Speaker. The Speaker of the House of Reps uh, had is trying his best to see how we can intervene uh, to bring a solution. Because I mean, if you look at the 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 <laughs> the the history of events, you know, uh, the chronology of the events as far as ASU's strike is concerned, this current seven-month strike, including the warning strikes, the negotiations haven't really gone well. It doesn't seem like there is a meeting point between the, both parties. This led the president uh, to um, call or to hand over the negotiations to the Minister of Education, asking him to lead the negotiations, uh, also saying that the Minister of Labor and Employment, whom you're seeing on your screens, should also be a part of it, but that the Minister of Education should lead uh, the negotiations. But it seemed like it was a from, from frying pan to fire situation. As I said, the Minister himself, uh, Adama Adamo, has been described as an arrogant 
uh, arrogant individual by some. Uh, they say that his arrogance probably would also be uh, a stumbling block to, or the alleged arrogance of the man would be a stumbling block uh, to negotiations. He hasn't met with us until date. Um, I think uh, the only person who may have met with us would be the Minister of State for Education. And that was at a meeting uh, brokered between the union, ASU, and the federal government. The minister was invited. He sent his minister of state. He hasn't really met with them. Um, so, of course, we know that ASU has been in court with the federal government, talking about the National Industrial Court. It seems confusing because, you know, on one side, the Minister of, Edu of Employment is taking and Labor is taking ASU to court, citing certain sections of uh, the Trade Disputes Act uh, as amended. Whilst the Minister of Education is trying to see how they can implement the Professor Mee Briggs Committee report or panel report by forming another 14-man committee to look into the recommendations of the Mee Briggs Committee, this committee led by the, the Minister has nobody from ASU there, but you have some VCs and pro-chancellors and education stakeholders there. Now, so this, 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 these meetings uh, and the process brokered by uh, Speaker Femi Bajabiamila seems to be the only avenue where ASU can sit down and have a listening ear because it's been confrontational. Is it from the Ministry of Education? Confrontational. Is it been from the Ministry of Labor and Employment? Confrontational. And this confrontation, you can see, it came into a head. It was really evident when the minister uh, walked out uh, on the meeting, you know, walked out of the meeting. So, um, of course, I'm sure that we should not expect no results, no resolution if this is left to Adamo Adamo, Minister of Education, whom you're seeing on your screen, or left to Chris Ngege, Minister of Labor and Employment. There will be no resolution. Absolutely nothing will come out of this. Absolutely nothing. Because, I mean, for there to be a proper negotiation, someone has to listen to ASU. All right? Someone from the government side has to sit them down and say, we hear you. All right? We want to solve this. Can we reach an agreement? Yeah. But not that um, high horse approach of the Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Dr. Chris Ngege, and uh, the Minister of Education, Malam Adamo Adamu, um, not the high horse approach of these two men. It won't solve anything. All right, so um, in the meeting, this was held on Wednesday in Abuja. All the stakeholders from both parties were in attendance to resolve the issue. And I must commend Ngege for going. I must commend Ngege for going. Adamo Adamu has not gone. I will be surprised, shocked, if he attends this, any of these meetings. Of course, Credit to him, he's been sending his Minister of State for Education. I dare Adamo Adamo to attend any of these meetings. I can guarantee he won't go. If he goes, I'll be shocked, all right? I'll probably have to present on TV that day without my tie. That's much I can. I won't shave my hair or anything, you know. But um, so, well, what happened was that, uh, you know, the, the, the meeting seemed to, have, um, you know, create another deadlock situation because of the walking out of... Uh, uh, you know, called out the ASU president, uh, Professor Emmanuel Sodeke, for calling on Nigerians to vote out APC in the 2023 general elections because of the ASU strike. So that's what Ngige said, that Sodeke had, had made such a statement before and uh, that he didn't find it funny. That was the premise on which he walked out of the meeting. Of course, uh, Speaker Femi Bachabi, I mean, I don't envy him. He has his work cut out for him. Uh, what time will he have to focus on legislative matters? But hey, this is very important as well. Uh, he called on the aggrieved uh, parties to sheathe their swords. You know, he kept banging his gavel on the table to try and get the house in order. Uh, but of course, it wasn't possible. When Osodoke had a, a chance to air his views at the meeting, he lamented the, uh, the, that the salaries of the lecturers are paid from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, which is not the order of the day in other countries. All right, that's what he said. Um, so he put that out. At the turn of the Labour Minister, uh, he said, quote, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is serious that uh, the ASU president has said that the APC government kept children at home and the Nigerian people should vote them out. You know, now when someone now replied and said he didn't say that, and he stood up and headed for the exit, asking angrily, what did he say? What did he say? You know, so um, I mean, this this uh, begins to ask make uh, will make people ask the question: Is is the federal government really sincere uh, about ending this strike? Is the Nigerian government really sincere about ending this strike? Or just just trying to push things back onto the next administration? Maybe looking at the the humongous um, 
amounts involved, you know, in the ASO deal. <laughs> Probably they want to hand this, um, this uh, as uh, the first assignment of the next administration. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right. That's that. Let's move on to the next uh, <laughs> uh, trending story. It's really funny, if you ask me. The next one. Um, this, the flooding in the country really been, it's really been an issue, a problem. Uh, really sad scenes and pictures from across Nigeria uh, of different parts of the country being flooded. And the latest, of course, um, uh, we're looking at Kwara State and Kogi State, you know, pictures and videos flooding the internet. A very sad situation. Well, the Kwara State Fire Service said, you know, on Saturday that it recovered two bodies, two bodies from a river at a uh, uh, area, the Akere Biata area in Ilorin, the Kwara State capital. You can see you know, pictures on your screen. Really sad situation there. Uh, the two corpses, according to a statement signed by the uh, agency's head of media and publicity, Hassan Adekunle, uh, were recovered from a river opposite Olushola Saraki Abattoir along Sobi Army Barracks Road in Ilorin, the Kwara State capital. Really sad one. Um, now, he also said that uh, findings by the fire service revealed that the car carrying the victims fell into the river while the driver was struggling to navigate through the flood. He also said that it suddenly got stuck while the flood pushed the car and its occupants uh, into the river. Oh my, really sad, really sad. Fela sang, what I no get enemy. But you know what? This are uh, some of the hazards that... Uh, can come away from a simple thing as water. It's a, it's, a, it's a natural situation, no, an act of nature, and uh, I think everybody needs to pull together to see how they can help in one way or the other. We see what's happening in uh, the United States of America where the government, you know, and even private individuals, uh, non-government organizations are sending relief materials to Florida that has been hit by a, a hurricane. Uh, so uh, I think we also need to think about these parts of the country that are experiencing a flooding and uh, see what we can do to support them, you know, government and even those outside government. It's very, very important as well. Now, apart from Kwara State, we also have Kogi State, uh, where you know, residents have also been suffering the effects of uh, a flooding ravaging different parts of that state, um, you know, and it's worsened, worsened the situation with the scarcity of portable drinking water. I don't know how we, how we can help the people in Kogi State, but it's a very dire situation indeed. A very, I saw a report in the Punch newspaper earlier that talked about, um, you know, the, uh, that they said their correspondent went around the, the capital of uh, Kogi State, Lokoja, and um, according to that report, they say that uh, Lokoja, the Kogi State capital, is the worst hit, um, and because of the flooding, people can't find water to drink, water scarcity. The Flood, we're told, affected the state waterworks, where water is processed and pumped for public consumption. So for those who are wondering how flood can affect uh, water scarcity, I mean, if everybody has or can create water scarcity, if everybody has a borehole, well, it seems in Kogi State they have pipe bone water. Um, I never knew this before now. But from this report that I'm citing, which we saw, um, it seems like there's a pipe bone water in Kogi State. So, uh, the waterworks have found it difficult to pump water because of the flooding, and uh, that has caused uh, water scarcity in Kogi State. Uh, um, the paper says that the new at uh, Gadumo, new layout, one of the areas close to the river Niger, uh, with many of its residents affected by the flood, the, the pumps were seen dry, a situation that some of the residents said had remained the same since last Saturday. Uh, it's a sad one. Water is very important. Um, so... Uh, According to the paper, they say that an official of the State Ministry of Water Resources uh, who spoke on condition of anonymity said that, quote, we can only treat and pump water for public consumption when the flood leaves the area. So that will be um, till the flood goes. I don't know what the residents are going to do, how they're going to cope. The flooding in Kogi State has been described as the most devastating since uh, uh, 2012. Yes, yeah, since 2012. In fact, they're saying it's more devastating than the floods of 2012 that uh, uh, you know we saw in Kogi State. I remember that one. There were even um, uh, helicopter pictures we had, aerial view pictures of uh, of that. It's really sad, and uh, hopefully they can get all the help they need. They need water. It's very important. 
Um, anyway, that's it on our top trending segment. Our thoughts go out to those in Kogi State and other parts of Nigeria, Kwara State, where we have floods, and we hope that the necessary help will get to them as soon as possible. We'll be right back after this break. We'll look at what the papers have to say. Opuna Boy and Kotara Johnson's ahead. Please stay with us. <laughs> 